Auspicious greetings to everyone. Welcome to the Fu Guangshan English Dharma Service. My name is Venerable Huizhe from Shila Temple, Los Angeles. Today, I'll be talking on the topic of Katina celebration in the Theravada tradition. So you might ask, what is a Katina celebration? In the Mahayana tradition, we will be celebrating the lunar month of July with a lot of Sangha offering events, such as this one that you'll see here in Shilai Temple. This is the Sangha day, as well as the events that will happen in Fo Guangshan headquarters, as well as all of the branch temples around the world. So for the lunar month of July, it is considered the month to make Sangha offerings. And in some cases also be called the Ulambana festival. And Ulambana is originating from a Sanskrit word of being upside down, as in we will take this opportunity to liberate the sentient beings that are considered living in an upside down state, such as those that are suffering in hell. And the Ulambana festival actually originated from the Buddhist time. During the Buddhist time in ancient India, there used to be rain retreats that stretch from the month of April, May and June. And because there are so much rain during the monsoon season, the disciples of the Buddha, the monks and nuns, have to stay at one spot in the monastery because they couldn't go out for alms round. Whenever they go and try to have alms round outside, they'll end up having their robes been drenched because of all the rain and all the flooded streets and paths. They couldn't even see what is underneath the rain water. So as to avoid having damages to the crops, as well as the sentient beings that you might hurt because you can't see anything underneath this flood of water. The Buddha had actually instructed all the monastics to be practicing in a single spot at a single monastery. Hence, we have the three months rain retreat during the Vasa monsoon season. During this time, the monks and nuns will be practicing diligently in the monastery. And because of all this diligence of their practice in the three months time, a lot of this disciple of the Buddha had actually attained higher enlightenment. And because of this, at the end of the three months rain retreat, it is also been called the day of the Buddha's rejoice. And a lot of the Buddhist devotees around the world will take this opportunity, the three months rain retreat, to let themselves participate in a short term monastic retreat, such as this one that you see at the left. This is a Thai young man that is a renouncing to become a monk during the three months rain retreat. And over to the right, as you can see here, this is a short term monastic retreat that is held in Shilai Temple. We have devotees of every age groups, from adults to young people to kids that will participate in our short term monastic retreat as well. And during that time, because there are a lot of the disciples of the Buddha that had gathered and had actually attained a higher level of enlightenment, it is also considered a very good opportunity to make Sangha offering. As you can see here, in the case of uh, Mogalana saving his mother, as the story goes, Venerable Mogalana 
in his meditation is able to see that his mother is actually suffering in the hungry ghost realm. And because of this, he has asked the Buddha of a way to liberate his mother. And the Buddha instructed that he should make offering to all the Sangha members within the gathering during the Vasa months. And because of this merit that he had accumulated, he had transferred it to his mother. And because of this, his mother is able to attain liberation. And this is where Katina comes in. At the end of Vasa, because of this great merit that one can achieve by offering the members of the Sangha, a lot of the devotees around the world will gather around temples and make offerings to a member of the Sangha. And part of this offering is also to make new monastic robes for the Sangha members. And the name Katina actually comes from the frame which the monastic robe are made upon. And this is the time when the monastic robes will be offered as part of the process of merit making by the devotee. And because of this ceremony of Katina, a lot of monastics are able to get a new set of robe. And most of the time, especially in the Theravada tradition, the end of Vasa is considered a new year in the life of a monastic and even the number of years that a person had become a monk or a nun, the number of years they had renounced, has also been counted as Vasa. For example, in my own case, I've been renounced and had taken the full precept for 12 years. So I would say that I have, have 12 Vasas with me. So this is how the word katina, as well as the term vasa, can be put into use. So the next time when you're in the monastery, whether you're at our headquarters or at the branch temples, at the branch temple where you are, you can always come to our temple, especially during the lunar month of July, to make sangha offering as well as to participate in the month-long chanting of the Dharma service. And as a conclusion, I'll also like to make a prayer that will be dedicated towards all the monastic around the world, and hopefully this can serve as a guidance of how to make a Sangha offering. So let us join our palms together to have this prayer for Dharma propagators. This is written by our founder, Venerable Master Xing Yun. O great compassionate Buddha, you realized the truth of the universe over 2,600 years ago. From that time on, the world has had bright hopes. Since then, Buddhism had spread worldwide. We are grateful for those Dharma propagators who have benefited all beings. They are like lighthouses that provide direction for people. They are like sweet dew that brings purity and coolness to people. O oh, great compassionate Buddha, the Dharma propagators not only must respectfully uphold the pure precepts, but also have the compassionate vow to liberate all beings. Not only must they have great knowledge and cultivation, but also right understanding and right view. Not only must they have dignified manners, but also merits, virtues, 
and an untarnished reputation. O Buddha, may they follow your footsteps to embody your spirit of exercising both compassion and wisdom, to embody your skillful means in teaching according to capabilities, to embody your fearless courage to liberate all beings, to embody the incisiveness of your unhindered eloquence. O great compassionate Buddha, we pray to you to bless and protect your safe and peaceful opportunities and your resolute mind that seek enlightenment. We pray that they will be free from physical and mental sickness and be able to break past hindrances in difficult situations. May your truth reach all beings in the three thousand chilocosmos. May your great dharma be promoted and developed in all nations. O great compassionate Buddha, please accept our sincere prayer. O great compassionate Buddha, please accept our sincere prayer. Namo Sakya Buddha. And for this, may the Buddha bless you and thank you for joining in with our Fu Guangshan English Dharma service. May you have an enjoyable day and hopefully one day we'll be able to see you at Shilai Temple or any of the branch temples all around the world. Thank you. Amitabha.